Hello and welcome to Agents of Clicks, a podcast for fans of Euroclicks. My name's Sean and with me today are fellow agents Christopher Dunn and Dale D'Andrade. Say hello guys. Hello. Yeah. Right, before we begin, I thought we could take a few minutes to briefly tell the listeners a little bit about ourselves, uh, such as how long we've been playing Euroclicks for, what our preferred playstyle is and so on. Uh, Chris, would you like to start? Yes, uh, hi, uh, my name is Christopher Dunn, I'm the manager of Blue Rod Games, um, I've been playing Hero Clicks for since Web of Spider-Man, which I cannot remember how long that is, um, anybody remember? Um, uh, yeah. Before my time. <laughs> anyway, yes, um, I normally, the type of Hero Clicks teams are sort of like, or generally sort of swarmy teams, things that do something different. Um, lots of like fiddly interactions. Um, that's about it. Great. Dale, what about you? Yeah, uh, my name's Dale. I've been playing for over 10 years. The collateral damage was the first set I played. Um, I'm more into kind of attacker with the right kind of support, but to try and get as many options as possible, I like to have weird things I can always do um, I'm generally more of a competitive player I've won the Nationals not last year the year before I'm responsible for the Flash family year to year and yeah I, I don't get to play all that much but I do enjoy the game and still playing Great, great um, well that just leaves me yeah, my name's Sean McDane uh, I'm not as seasoned as you guys I haven't been playing for as long as you guys I've been playing for about four years now. Um, started playing around about Wolverine and the X-Men around about that time. Um, I'm, I'm not first whether I play casual or competitive. Uh, either either is fine with me as long as I'm playing. Um, I tend to just play modern age stuff, not golden age. I like to play anything that's new and shiny. and, um, and Yeah, so I usually play once or twice a week and I also judge at my local venue as well. So... So that's the introductions out of the way. Um, so, how you, you guys have you been playing much Hero Clicks over the holidays? Or I can't say over the holidays. I've got I've got a lot of time too. Um, played in the open before we get with I used to. Yeah. I came down to Middlesbrough for that, and um, that was the last time I played. It didn't go so well. <laughs> so what 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 did you play there and deal? Uh, so because I've been a little bit out of it I've just stuck with a, a team I took to Nationals which again didn't do too badly but that was more my fault I felt like on the team I uh, stuck with Superman the shifting one uh, the 75 point version of the world's finest which is quite easily one of my favourite models going uh, the 85 point Batman from Trinity Wars who is just insane uh, the 25 point uh, the 25 point Batman Superman robot can you see the theme <laughs> uh, always just as league team an ATA for the extra defence and a Pandora's box for some extra abilities and it's just a lot of high defence lots of damage and Batman just gives it all of the options I could possibly need yeah more of a DC fan I guess uh, I th- yeah I think so yeah uh, what about you Chris what have you been playing anything um, well I can't remember what I played in the open now um, the played a couple of the with kids opens. I played. Um, we went up to Hamilton with that group yeah. uh, in Scotland. I played like a Mixie Quinjet team. Um, I played Mixie Frogman, seventy five point Quinjet, uh, two Ultron drones, and Brimstone. And I think I had eight ID cards. Yeah, that worked really well. Uh, Mixie was. Um, just basically pulse wave and locking everybody down and then the drones were calling in ID cards um, and just beating everybody up. Uh, so I came second in that. Played the other with kids open at Beanie Games in Stockton. It didn't do quite so well. Um, I'd swapped out. I've done like a Quinjet team again with a smaller point Quinjet. Um, played Jean Grey with drones and it was basically the same sort of thing. Um, minus Mixie and Frogman uh, just with Jean Grey just like TK the drones out calling people in but I hadn't really practiced that team very much and I crashed and burned um, so I played like after the WizKids opens just played like a couple of casual games and just trying to maybe practice for the next round of the WizKids open which are in next month um, been messing around with Ant-Man multiple Ant-Man teams with Quicksilver, Demon Avengers, 
Um, while it works really well, so casually, I'm not convinced about it. So competitively, because they're all a bit squishy, and there's so many characters that just can ignore the ants and not really do huge amount. And if you get somebody like a uh, Green Arrow coming and precision striking your Ant Man or Quicksilver to death, then it goes downhill pretty fast. So that's what I've been up to. Yeah. Um, well, I haven't. I, well, other than the Whiskey's Opens, I'm not going into detail as to as to what I played in the Whiskey's Opens because there's a, there's an article on the website um, detailing what teams we we played at the the, um, the Stockton event. Um, more recently, I've just played been playing casual games really. Um, I played a, a, a fun game with with Matthew, who, who, my son. Um, where we played, uh, it was a, a battle of the fast forces. Uh, we randomly picked different fast forces packs um, on on a roll of a dice. Really, uh, I ended up with the Joker's World set. Um, Built a Gotham City team using the Batman from that set: Harley Quinn, Penguin, Mister Freeze, and Riddler. Um, that Batman is ridiculously good. <laughs> and, yeah. and Matty ended up. Uh, playing the Uncanny X-Men and ended up playing every figure from that set because they're, they're only 50 points each so um, yeah it didn't do too good for me because uh, the game went at time he ended up winning on points which is kind of part of the course when I play against money um, the team although that Batman is ridiculously good he's no competition for um, an angel carrying X-23 around <laughs> yeah, he, just, like, he does die. Rex face, basically. Um, <laughs> well, was, was yeah, his trade is, is good, um, giving him plus one attack for each of his opposing character. Um, but yeah, he, he, he goes down hard when, when when hit with any any sort of uh, met with any sort of offense but yeah yeah he, he suffers from he, does, he suffers from not being able to move and attack I mean he does do stupid damage attacking everybody yeah. with, like such high attack it's, it's just mental but yeah he's only 75 points so you're not expecting them to be carrying the team but yeah yeah I mean the team move hurts. The, the figures are good but the team lack mobility there's no like you know there's no flyers there there's no um, uh, whereas the, the uh, Uncanny X Men had. You've obviously got Jean Grey on there, and you've got Angel who can carry someone around as well. So, uh, but yeah, it was good. It was good fun. So that's what I've been playing. Um, okay, so I think what we'll do now is we'll we'll move on to the tactical advice section. Um, so in this section, uh, Chris is going to lead us through the uh, the first. Uh, uh, issue of this section um, where you're going to focus on a particular stra- tactical strategy uh, that can be utilised in the game. So Chris what, what have you got for us this time round? Okay well um, we're looking at sort of ID card inspiration effects. Mm-hmm. Um, now this is especially looking at probably when drones start to rotate out um, which might be sometime this year before or after Nationals uh, Age of Ultron set. Um, so basically looking at sort of a lot of Joker's Wild especially has given us a lot of like cheap characters that you can call in with IDs. Um a lot of the J- JSA. So you've got things like the thirty five point flash, thirty point Hawkman, uh Doctor Fate, uh forty point green arrow, things like that. They've all got ID cards. And normally you um if you're bringing out lots of ID cards along you know, people use drones quite a lot. Um, so you're bringing in 120 point figures and things like that. But what I'll be basically looking at is what to do, um, calling in these like cheap characters and using like some of the useful inspirations. Um, so things like 35 point flash can give like a plus three to speed. You've got 30, uh, Hawkman ID card gives plus one attack and damage uh, with close attack. Uh, Green Arrow can give you plus two attack for mid range combat attacks. So things like that, which are basically looking at um, uh, combat modifications for, you know, you're paying five points, you're doing, giving somebody like a power action um, and you're able to like modify some of these stats. Um, so it's really sort of looking at, the um, fig, you, you know, you're doing sort of a support figure, maybe calling these in, maybe boosting up like your main attacker 
rather than the sort of traditional use of ID cards, which has been bringing in, you know, your main attacker, really. But because, you know, if the likes of drones rotate out, um, if you want to call in Nick Fury, you're going to have to call him in with a 120-point figure rather than, say, a 30-point figure. Um, so there's quite a lot of teams run support figures um, that can call in these guys. So you're looking at, at the moment, things like Jarvis is very popular. Um, you've got that 45-point Lex Luthor from the Batman <coughs> Superman set. Um, he, these these uh, General Lane from Superman Wonder Woman, these guys are generally not doing any non-free actions. They're there to perplex they have to probability control, um, leadership, that sort of thing. So they're not doing power actions. So they'll probably never have tokens on them. Mm-hmm. So you, they're, they're free then to sort of um, call these guys in, give you some combat modifications, maybe give you a special power, things like, uh, um, again, that sort of Lex Luthor, just going back to him, from the, he's got a, there's a card that he calls in, 45 points. If you've got a 50-point figure, you call him in. He's giving out Superman enemy, um, team Billy, as well as like, yeah. all of the other powers that he gives. So that's like an outwit. He's got prob. He's got perplex. That's a, that's all your support um, powers that you yeah. might need for like your main attacker, really. Well, it's a bit like I've, I mean I've played IDs quite often, but uh, it's, I, I never really. It's more who can hit the hardest, you know. And I never really concentrate yeah. on, on the inspirations, but now you've got this this batch of cheaper point figures especially from Joker's Wild um, yeah that's, a, that's, uh, that's something like that I mean have to start looking at yeah it's, it's, it's becoming like increasingly common to have have like these ID cards characters to come out and not just be he's the pop out Nick Fury style shoot them in the face do loads of damage and disappear I mean you look at it lots, lots of people are starting to play the cheap ones just for the inspirations or just for like a support piece I've seen a lot of uh, Batman ID card being used or Black, or Black Panther just really to get a barrier up a barrier on, on a you know, cheap yeah. character shots barrier up it buys you a, t- a turn and when it might be absolutely like, necessary for your big guys to clear or something like that and you haven't got the opportunity to run away um, there's loads of really good ones there's uh, that, the Black Panther from the Civil War starter set it's only 45 points as I said gives Barry to everyone it just has the uh, tactical takedown his uh, special power on his, on his first click when he pops out to be able to limit those free actions like the Grey Lanterns match used to do or effectively outside of someone that's that's, uh, that's not bad you know if you're going to if you're going to be stuck, but you know, stuck for a turn. You know, burning a cat, burning a, a talker, another character who's not really going to do anything anyway to protect them for the turn. By you, but you may attack that turn to rest while shutting down the other person. It's, it's helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's also that fifty point level, I think, because lots of different things you look at. Um, just got some in front of us as well because I'm looking at these for my one of my teams and um, things like Superman Blue. Um, 50 point Superman comes in, gives everybody stand next to him invincible, and he protects you from pulse wave for a turn. Um, you've got see the 50 point Iron Man from Nick Fury set. Um, bring him in with an Iron Man card, he gives plus one to your attack. He gives you ignore, hindering. You've got the flex, you've got the shooting team ability, you know, very, very, lots of little stat boosts there. Anyway. Oh, yeah, something to think about for when you for when. You yeah, I think especially when drones rotate out, because it yeah. will be you're gonna have to stop playing your attack on the map, and you're gonna then think about well, that attack I might want to attack actually rather than just mm-hmm. calling stuff. So there's lots of like little supporty, in, um, so just a different way of playing them really. Mm-hmm. Super thought, super thought. Okay, yep. well okay. Uh, we'll um, we move straight on to news now. So uh, Dale, what's been happening in the world of Heroclix? <laughs> So, of course, where this is our first one, so we can go back as far as you like to talk about it. I've drew the line as far as I'm concerned on the connexes. They've been coming out with leaking slowly over the holiday period, yeah. uh, so I thought we'd just talk about them. Now, with the news, pi- the news piece, we don't want to give you all information ever because there's lots of pieces. Yeah, they're all out. You've seen half the dials before. Uh, so what we're doing really is, if you want to see the, dial- the dials that we're talking about, if you've not seen them before, they're all on our Facebook page. Just look for Agents of Clicks. We'll be there for you. And the pictures are always going to be put, put up before the podcasts come out. Um, but we're really going to be looking at 
what a figure does, what it's interested us about us. Does it change the game or open up something for a keyword, things like that. Um, so just going to quickly go through some of the new ones. So start with Spider Gwen. Um, relatively simple dial, charge blades, claws. Interesting little can go through wall section. Apart from that, not really huge different to any other charge blades, claws tie up piece. Anyone got anything to say about it other than that? Uh, uh, no, I don't, it's, it's not for me. I prefer the uh, Spider Gwen from Superior Foes. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll still don't get me wrong. I'll still want one because <laughs> it's new and shiny, but probably would never play it. Yeah, same here. Yeah. It's not the type of figure that I'd, you know, you know, I'm not really going to play somebody to charge and blade, really, six five points. It's okay um, if you like that sort of thing, but not for me. Yeah, it's just it's just nice and shiny. You know, it's an interesting model. The, the color scheme is fun. If you, uh, Spider Gwen's exploding, so if you like Spider Gwen, great. That's another one for you to get. Um, it's not really much else to say about it. Um, from there, I'll go on to uh, Bat Knight. Uh, this is a piece I'm excited about to be honest a uh, couple of keywords there getting a bit of a help Batman family in Gotham City you've got a giant flyer so you've got a super taxi you can carry two people around it has sidestep to begin with as well so increasing that maneuverability with a team that doesn't normally have lots of people flying around for them um, apart from that he doesn't do a huge lot he's a teamed up con character so that's fun he's got ram I think that's it's not going to be used a lot often just kills himself really it's just a really good taxi secondary attacker who turns into a tie-up piece at the end. I'm going to be getting one. Or hopefully, I'm going to be getting one. But uh, I don't think it's going to shake the world up. But I think it's really cool. Yeah, yeah it's like a good nice model, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Um, yeah, it's what happens if Optimus Prime turned into the Batmobile instead. <laughs> it's a pretty good description for him, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, I like him. King, I like all the Kingdom Come figures. Um, uh, I will be trying my very best to get my hands on one, at least one. At least one, because they're, they're obviously generic in the count yeah. book. So yeah, you want more than one. At least one. <laughs> You've got like nice stats as well. Obviously, he was a Kingdom Come trait. You cannot modify them very easily, um, but he starts out really good stats, and he's got like you know Indom, Giant, Flight, KT Team Billy. You get quite a lot for the those five picks. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good. I think, I think to be honest, out of the, the non-dirt cheap ones that we'll talk about in a moment, I think he's the best Connex for like potential, uh, if you're looking for kind of competitive. And also, he just adds something really interesting to two keywords that have always been a nice team. So, you, know, you can always make a good Gotham City team, but a, a lack of a flyers normally hurt them. And this is just like a super taxi for them. Works for me. Yeah. Uh, the next two I'll talk about they're to me the most exciting but I think potentially the most likely is probably competitive it's a giant man to start off with uh, the, the Colossal they sit similar to the uh, Man Wonder Woman sets they, he comes with the one click for dirt cheap for 15 points Colossal Retaliation version I think that's the one you're going to see more often than not I don't think he does have a 202 oh, 200 125 point dial I'm not seeing anything hugely exciting amongst them it's very deep for the points that's something to mention but apart from that he is really just your standard giant who runs around hitting things his uh, class reality retaliation is interesting enough I suppose he uh the same as before, teleports over to punch the guy who's attacked him and didn't kill him or hurt one of your friends and sweeps within three line of fire as opposed to the usual um, well, there isn't a usual one actually I suppose yeah, doing a, th- a wider berth, doing three damage to each thing he gets hits and knocking back all flyers I said, it's interesting, he's got Avengers keyword, he's 15 points, he's the cheapest one going and I think he's going to see a lot of playing lots of Avengers teams yeah, I, mean, I think keyword. Sorry, uh, uh, it is keyword that you probably would complain him for, as opposed yeah. to if you want a cross or retaliator. Um, he's probably not as good because his his damage is not like penetrating like, compared to the atom at fifty points, for example, which is probably what a lot of people are going to hear cross or retaliate up here uh, paying for. Um, so he's got less attack. He's not ignoring all the powers that Adam does. He's not doing penetrating damage. Um, so I think you're playing them. You probably want to play them on Avengers or scientist team, really. Um, trying to team. I quite like its 125 point dial. Um, it's got a lot of clicks. 
he's got no damage reduction though, unfortunately, and no, you can't like equip him with anything being a giant, so he's probably gonna die pretty fast. But um, you've got good stats apart from maybe his attack value is a bit low, but yeah. yeah. Um, and the only way I think I'd play this guy is if it was on a, an Avengers team team. I certainly wouldn't pick him over the Atom, as you just said, Chris. Um, the only other thing is, obviously, this giant man actually um, has the real name of Hank Pym, unlike the other giant man that was in the Legacy of Hank Pym box set that didn't have a real name. So he's always an option to use the uh, the uh, Hank Pym ID card. Yeah, as you put it, you know, for those that don't have the Atom ID card. Um, is it, is it the other thing as well is that he being a con exclusive is that he will not rotate out for ages yeah. as the Superman Wonder Woman ones will rotate out so you might be left with him as your only cross retaliator um, and he will be king no he will be king because he's still 50 points and he does a lot so yeah, yeah. just comparing him to the other ones he just he doesn't look quite good. Yeah, he's, he, he, I would say yeah, his class retaliation is pretty middling when it comes to the list of the moment. I wouldn't say it's the worst one, um, but it's by far not the best. And it's you know he has 15 points as I said. I think the reason you'll see him is if people are playing Avengers team. And again, I think that's only going to be really competitive as it stands until the jet rotates out. If the jet drops out, I don't think you're going to see an awful lot of uh, giant man either. Yes. Um, but I think there is a potential to see him being played essentially as a 23-point model. Uh, there is an 8-point tank uh, that we're going to talk about next, the Pim Pocket tank. Uh, same as with a lot of these uh, vehicles. So it doesn't break theme if they've got Hank Pim, Giant Man or Ant-Man on there. This is an interesting little thing. It doesn't really do anything as it stands. It just follows around uh being, cha- being carried some of the synthesis of Despotalis um, with your friendly characters they walk around and it just hangs just appears next to them but it does have an interesting can turn into a giant thing uh, if you could attack and drop your attack down one and still hit you get to do some extra damage you get to drop a tank in the middle of the threat of the enemy team um, and you're off suddenly getting a 50 point tank I suppose for effectively eight points, and it's doing damage as well. I think people are going to. See, I think we're going to see a lot of that. If you're playing any of them, I think he's all pretty much always going to join the team, even if it is just eight points of just being silly. I mean, why not? Yeah, I love I love this pocket tank. Um, again, going to do my very best to get one, uh, and I'm never going to build a team that it is not on. <laughs> it's it's really good. Uh, yeah, it's just like yeah, you will be breaking theme if you're not. It's got the armor keyword, so it's still theme it with that. But um, if you want to like uh, play a theme team, you may not be playing it. But it does. It's got a lot. Even if yeah, you get a hit, you get the damage, but you also like spread people out as well. So if you if you see a lot of things like Bizarro Green Arrow, it's another thing. Or you, you you're facing somebody with who everybody likes to stay together. You know you can do a you do your damage and you spread them out. So you, if you've got any follow-up attacks as well, then uh, it's quite a big effect for like eight points. Yeah, and yeah, and then we'll go on from there then. So yes, of course, the eight point one is a foot is fun, but really you're looking at what what could it do when it turns into the big tank? The fifty point version, it's a weird. It's got really high, it's really high damage, a really really low attack, and then um, it's you can't use the, the so you can't use the driver attack. You can't replace putting a green arrow in there or something and go, oh, I've got third attack and three damage. You are stuck with the actual tank itself. It does still deal damage, even if it misses, for free. I think that's probably all it's ever going to do. But, I mean, you, we're, we're talking here about paying eight points for it. If, you, if you've gotten to this point in the game of where you've got it out, you've got a pilot and it and start shooting, it's just gravy. I mean, it's done its job by this point anyway. Yeah, I doubt you'd be able to, yeah, because it can't, um, it doesn't have like the autopilot trait in that version. It has got an autopilot version, but we'll get onto that. Um, so yeah, if you've shot it out and it landed on top of your opponent's team, then you've got to run over to it and try and pilot it. it it's not going to happen. Um, so it's probably just, the yeah, end just using it to tie it up, really, if you're just playing it from like the pocket town. I think it's got, you can play it. Um, maybe it's potentially viable maybe there's some of the lines but um, I quite like the, the 
just as a 50 point just as a taxi it's got like three passengers as you see it can do damage even if it misses it's got enhancement it's got the pd team ability um yeah. i think that i think that's really where it shines on, on when you're kind of shooting out there if you can get if you can catch up with it getting pd and enhancements not bad i mean it's still going to be just a giant mess in the way as i said i think it's going to turn up in lots of if you play in Pim, you're probably going to see the 8.1 stuck it across it, and it's always going to be fun when you do it. Like finally, pull out your Pim tank and just smack that on the board all of a sudden. But I don't know, it's not going to it's not going to change the world. But I mean, you're looking at eight points for a giant tank. Apart from that, though, I think when you're looking at you know, the normal vehicle style of it, I'm not thrilled by it. I mean, the autopilot version is super dull I mean there's nothing about there's just nothing we can talk about it it, it doesn't do anything but sidestep and that's about it it's just a tank it's quite boring um, the non-autopilot version of it, it again it, it, it's similar a bit more damage to it in that version uh, and it's got some interesting traits where it can't have its defence powers countered um, uh, but apart from that it's really not all that exciting as an actual tank itself yeah. I think it's only really going to see play as an 8 point that'll have it on the side just in case anyone else agree or? yeah I mean I, I can't see the point of, of uh, paying f- even 50 points for, for, for the uh, particle tank when you can just pay 8 points for the pocket tank and bring it in um, well, I think you could, yeah, because it, you, you're not guaranteed that you can bring it in. And you, until you've actually hit with it, you don't get it on the board. So I think seeing, I still think that the 50.1 might see, maybe not competitive play, but it is a good taxi for your team. Um, it does give you support powers. You will have to pay extra for the pilot, though. So you might think that it costs 50, but if you do want to play it, you will have to pay at least is it 10 points, the cheapest. Yeah. On by yeah, that yeah, like a thug. Thug, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, thug. Um, so you will have to pay that on top. So uh, yeah, maybe it's not competitive, but like having, having the fifty point one with sidestep with PT with enhancement, and it has got a really long range and really good improved targeting. If it only could hit things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It, it's interesting. Uh, we we will probably play it as a joke if one of us gets it. But I mean, the eight one point one, you, you'll see a lot of the fifty point plus. Probably not. And it actually um, comes with the giant man as well, doesn't it? It comes in a in a set. Yeah. Is it one big like, giant yeah. set? It's the yeah, it's the giant man and the two tanks, I believe. That's no, it's only oh, that's... Top, top four, is it for the top, the, top the four? The, yeah. The... But you'd probably well, it's find a really good price to come forth for. It's it's, it's, um, really good. it's been listed as one of the uh, sellable Connellys, but I don't think necessarily for the opens. But I think at nationals it would be one of the ones you yeah, can buy. Buy. That's yeah. cool. And um, but I'll move on from there. I think <laughs> uh, next one, next con exclusive is the Spirit of Vengeance Red Hulk. Oh, that really isn't, as far as I'm concerned, much to say on it. I yeah, mean. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, looks like it's going to be a giant slab of plastic. You know what? It is funny to see Red Hulk running around with you know, Venom on him and the Spirit of Vengeance fiery head thing. But I mean, it's yeah. not all that interesting. Oh, I'm so disappointed in this figure. I can't say I'm disappointed. I mean, I think the 200 point version is actually not that bad. You've got to remember he's got plasticity and shape change and yeah. improved movement loads. But I mean, it, it's just you're thinking he is like the Red Hulk with everything attached to him that you could possibly find. And he just doesn't do all that much. He's not yeah. even a transporter. I mean, meh. It, it, it's cool. Yeah. And he hasn't even got the right real name for the ID. He's specifically no, no. not got the right name. That, <laughs> there's no way yeah. that wasn't done on purpose. Well, it's not as if that goes, if you paid him at 200 points, there's lots of better, you know, 200 point figures you might want to call in, I suppose, but, um, yeah, but that, that you can tell that's, that's got to be on purpose. The same way that, that they, you know, the, the, the Hank, the Hank Pym set giant man, not having the real name Hank Pym when everything yeah. else did, it's, it's, it's definitely on purpose. All the rest of the, uh, Red Hooks have always had, uh, Thunderbolt Ross, but not Thaddeus Ross. <laughs> There you are. As I said, move on. I don't think there's much more to say about him. Yeah. The next one I think is probably one of the more interesting. Maybe open up a new type of team. The Earth X Captain America. 
uh, we'll call him Earth X, but let's be honest, he's Shield Captain America. Um, 65 points, uh, funky leadership for where he doesn't take it off one person. He takes it off as many as he likes, up to 150 points for total. Um, apart from that, stops a bit of mind control, has a bit of an odd thing where he can steal equipment, equipment items and keep stealing them from wherever he can punch. I mean... I think he's good. I think you might see a if people can get a couple of them, you might see some shield teams using him and some of the cheaper good shield teams maybe. Yeah. Um, something maybe akin to get the Quinch out, the lost law version, and just use him to make out as many real boy shield agents as he can and swarm the board. I think that'd be quite interesting. I'm not sure about competitive, but I mean I'm going to give it a try if I can get one. Yeah, I mean I think he's I think he's really good. Um, just. I, I, I love that leadership. Um, just being able to remove uh, tokens of characters of 250 points in total um, with the amount of uh, pog generators that are on now. Removing action tokens off all your, all your pogs, all your ants, Zero so. point pogs? What's that? Zero yeah, point pogs? Exactly. You can all have free leadership. It's ridiculous. It's, yeah, I won't. Uh, Andy also yeah. has which... Um, I don't know if this is a, 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 a thing that may be coming in the in the what if sets, but he has the Earth X keyword, and was Earth X a, the storyline for that a what if story? I think it was. Uh, isn't it? I can't say I'm a hundred percent sure. I know um, do know them. What ifs are like uh, the equivalent of the DCL elsewhere. They're yeah. always they're usually like a one off. You know, here's your slightly bigger than normal issue, and it's just. Here's a storyline that we're already doing. Imagine if yes. this had happened instead. You know, I imagine maybe, if Iron Man died. Maybe we some more Earth X figures in the, uh, the Marvel What If set. Maybe that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I like him. I want one. <laughs> I think just that as well. His leadership um, can't be re-rolled, but you can do something fiddly with giving him the. Or not given him, but given somebody adjacent to him, the team ability that gives plus one on his leadership roles. Yeah. It's like the soldier keyword, because you can team with like Element Man from. It can't be re rolled, but you could swap it out with Mixie's Dice, couldn't you? Yeah, I don't know, just saying you can get the plus one. You can do it in a four, five, or six. Um, Mixie's, Mixie's Dice specifies that he yeah, has to. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It has to be re rollable. Um, there is the extra little side bit that we didn't really mention. It is the 150. I imagine you guys probably assumed and we said swarms of the people uh, he doesn't actually have to have an adjacency either so you could yeah. just use him as a sit in the back and just have your 150 point model hopefully just oh. driving constantly and he's only 65 points just... and he's 65 points I'm, oh, I'm thinking get if, you, if you've got the quinch out and you can get him to just jump out as a, as a as one of the staying ID characters, stick him in the back of the map and just hope for the roll. I mean, he's nice and all. He's got some really good stats for a 65 point model, six clicks as well. I mean, he is solid. But yeah. if you can get him out there, I mean, just having that like those extra those extra actions and uh, clearing in the middle of nowhere when people aren't expecting it is going to be really good. People are going to have to get on him straight away. Otherwise, he could do some horrible things to your team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's very nice, very nice. So it's like just a wow. six point point figure as well. So it's not as if yeah. he's just, you're just not just playing him for the leadership. He can do quite a lot. He's putting down, yeah, he's got like decent, like 11 attack, uh, three uh, drops of two. But, you know, he's a decent little attacker. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like we've probably underplayed this preparing for war trade. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I stopped playing when this when this came out, but there was a cat woman that used to do this from the 10 year anniversary from Ember Right, where she's punches you and steals your items. Now relics have become more you know, more common. Things like Doctor Fate running around with his hell on helmet on and, you know, Harley pulling a hammer out of nowhere. I mean mm-hmm. having Captain America punch that and stealing it. Oh my god, somebody's uh, relic if you if you play the sin sorry if you play in Pandora's box. No, but get, some of them are it, it doesn't just, it's it's they, they are just equipped they're just equipped items. Because of the change in the the, the word in it doesn't relate to like the sins, which are relic. They're not equipped, so it's just like the new yeah, science object. too. So it's, it's like special like, objects, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like even um, you can't do it for possessors, like eclipse oh, or anything like that. They're not originally things, like, things like the weapons drop and the pins particles and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So, 
they're, they're, to be fair, they're, they're still becoming you know more popular. I think over the past couple of sets have had one or two one or two items that each came out with them, and there's more and more characters, especially from the like fast fast yeah. things, they were bringing their own special items with them. So we might, might we might start seeing more of it and. Just him being able to steal up is pretty cool. For on top of the rest of it, I mean, he does so much already. You can't, yeah. can't, can't, can't state how good that is. It's quite mental. Uh, there is one more con exclusive. Do we, do we have to talk about it? Uh, it's, on, uh, go on, keep going. All right, for, for the sake of completion, it's Pizza Face. Yeah. <laughs> T- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You, you'll, you'll probably get this feel. We think it's cute, it's nice, whatever. But oh my god, the garbage. I mean, apart from the odds, dirt cheap little support piece and Krang being horrible, they're just, they're just bad on bad on bad. We'll talk about it more later on because we've yeah. challenged ourselves, a real proper challenge to build teams and use him in some sort of useful way. But I mean, he is an odd, odd thing. Doesn't really do a huge amount. He has some weird mind control. And I think the only real interesting thing he does is he just gives you some free living pizzas for poison support flying pizza tokens I mean that's interesting I suppose if you like if you play up against a friend who has always has this obsession with playing swarm teams getting you know six pizzas for free at the beginning of the game is fun yeah, but, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. there's a lot of love out there for, for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles set and I just do not understand it at um, all <laughs> uh, I, I have no problem with them. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I like I like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a kid, so I can't complain. New stuff is new stuff, but when it comes to the games, they just don't stack up next no. to. So for me, it feels like they fit in the game enough that it's not a problem like Street Fighter was. It's, just, it's not going to break the game because they're underpowered, mm-hmm. but it it, it it did feel a bit odd. I mean, they don't fit properly at the game as far as like the superhero game as far as as far as I see it. Yeah, I mean, you look at Pizza Face, this Pizza Face at 60 points, and then you look at the Captain America X that we've just looked at for 65. And it's. I know who I'm playing. They just, yeah, exactly, they just don't, don't compare to this. So. Well, I think you're doing the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles down a little bit. We've seen them in competitive play. People have done well with, like, yeah. it seems to be like Series 1 um, figures. They seem to have done a bit better or had not seen them on more play. You've seen people. Um, Play them quite well. Um, like the base turtles, like the original uh, turtles, like the common ones from the first set as well. And there was with the turtle van. Um, I think you know. I think Pizza Face is okay. He's only sixty points. Um, those living pizza. I think it depends on your opponent's team, what use you can get out of them. But he's not bad. For sixty, especially with that mind control. Get him on a second clip with mind control. Um, uh, he's three all right. Back. Um, and a range, yeah. It, 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 I think it depends. It's a bit random the number that you're getting, and you can't produce any more. I think that's the issue. So if you're only facing me. like one one figure and you only get one piece, that's a bit like not quite as good. Yeah. Yeah. You, you mentioned the uh, the the, the, the teenage mutant ninja turtles that you have seen. I think really the all we've seen is is that Sai is really broken. I mean, as a weapon that is. The, the everybody just plays that it's, it's not so much about who's carrying it it's just a really good thing and it it's also makes no sense I don't care if it does penetrating damage he's holding them wrong they're just uh, they're a disarming <laughs> weapon that's just me being silly but I think <laughs> we'll move on we'll talk about that. it more it, no, no it, in, in, they've got me in the dead series with it, uh, Electra is always doing them she's going to cut her fingers off when she tries to carry the sword <laughs> It's it's one of those things, yeah. She 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 uses them like a punching knife you would, would with a you know weird holding it through her fingers, and really they were never used as that. It's all for take the salmon. Somebody, but that's me being pedantic, and uh, just Hollywood being Hollywood, isn't it? I think we'll move on from there, and we'll quickly blast through the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles since we're already bashed on it. Why not continue? We've got a handful of new foot tech so if you're not sick of uh, foot ninjas here's some invisible foot ninjas there isn't really much to say about them as far as I can see there's an interesting trait that you may see more of later on um, but I think apart from that if you've seen what the other foot ninjas do they're just more of the same but without all of having this trait and the scientist keyword for reasons I don't think I'm ever going to understand well they're tech 
Is it the Panic of the Attack? Yeah. yeah, the guitar ones, is that how you pronounce it? Because um, they do, if you get them in Hindering Train, they can do blade, uh, penetrating blades, and obviously the invisibility tech means they can actually get close to you. Um, or give them like lots of bonuses to it. I don't really like the other ones. I don't think they do very much to them. Uh, uh, maybe the so, twin katanas, yeah, two blades, do. picking the highest. I think cool. the penetrating blades better though. Thirty-five I, points. I, not too bad. Yeah, in 35 points, you might see maybe a couple of handful pop up on a scientist team to fill up some spots. But, I mean, there is some really good scientists out there. I think the only thing I know of it is the invisible tech trait. Maybe we might see it again. Somebody else taking it it might, might seep its way into becoming like a, a slightly more common thing, like the shift in focus that, you know, we, we've seen a couple of models with that and are about to see more. So I'm going to use that. A a bit with, I don't know, is it 2003? Is this my childhood or not? I think it is. Uh, oh, is it not? No. The 2003 is the uh, the Nickelodeon cartoon where everything's yeah. a bit dark. Yeah, if you all travel through time, space. No, it's not my stuff. childhood. It's not yours. <laughs> Too old. Uh, and um, I've, I'm, there's also, if you want to have a look, there is a, another Casey Jones that's been revealed. I mean, there's nothing to say about that. It's Casey Jones, and it's not even doesn't have t- doesn't have tails. Synergy. He's just another forty fifty point figure. That's fine. Scope I'm looks good. Scope looks good. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. But I'm not going to talk about that anymore. I just I've, I've had my fill of turtles and pizza. Uh, last things to know of uh, for the now, I suppose, is the starting. The dripping feed of the Deadpool set that's coming up. Uh, we've seen two so far. The first and considerably less interesting is the Cannonball. To be honest, it's all about just you keep moving, do a bit of damage, 75 points. He's got to stop clicking there. I, I don't think he's great, but I mean, he's a, a, another continuing trend of like 75 points and reasonable, where you're going to have seven clicks from now on. Yeah. I think that's the, the, the key for it. That's the new kind of competitive way I think they're going, rather than it being he's one character who can do a thousand different things. But make a character who can do one thing, can do it really well, and they've given him enough life to actually keep doing it rather than just pop off in one hit. Mm-hmm. Anything to say about Cannonball? Or I feel like I've just used him more as a meta commentary than anything. No, it is the, uh, it's obviously the new cool thing to have, like seven clicks for 75 points. That is quite one or two figures, like popping up with that, the likes of. Um, was it Brimstone? He's 75 point Batman. Yeah. I mean, it is. Um, it's really good. You generally can't one shot them. You probably take two or three hits to kill them. So, yeah, they will stick around to the point. Especially uh, who is a stop click. Yeah. It's, all, it's, all, it's all, all the cool kids are doing it. I think the more interesting one, though, is the Deadpool. Again, can't really give a full picture for this one because, as I've mentioned, he's a shifting focus Deadpool. So, we're expecting it, we're expecting what? Four, maybe. I think we've both fired four for the Superman and Batman. Yeah, Jack probably Spectre, another three, the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, 75 points again, seven clicks. Uh, interesting move power of phasing for free. I think his numbers are fine. And if he was 75 points and didn't shift, I'd say probably a tad expensive because he didn't do an awful lot. But I mean, not by a huge amount. I'd say if he was, say, 65 points, I'd probably play him without a second thought. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for 75, depending on how good the other ones are going to be, I think it's going to be amazing. I do like that. Um, yeah, that's special. Oh, yeah. Say so again, Chris? Yeah, just like your, your mobility one. Um, so you can just sit as a free action, just keep moving up until you're within range, and then you just free action, just swap yeah. into one of the damage dealing ones, which I'm imagining is going to be at least one with big guns, one with like swords, and one regenerating one off the top of my head. Yeah, I think yeah, there'll probably be that, 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 that one, one regenerating one with the stupid quip. So you have like prop control or plex, something weird like that. There will be more because it's a party, but I mean, just annoying more than anything I imagine. Um, I think he's going to be cool. I think you're going to see lots of him. So I've only just been able to see his uh, keywords. I got myself a little excited because for some reason I thought it was an Avenger. But I thought that's stupid, but I'll accept more Avengers. It's not as easy as an assassin, uh, X Force assassin, detective, soldier. 
detective I can't see. I've never read a comic book for Deadpool where he no. doesn't just sit on there and complain that Batman does this makes this make look really cool and how does he do it without being bored out of his mind. But I'm not gonna complain. More keywords is more keywords. But is that not something to do detective? Is that not something to do with X Force or, or... I, I can't say I've I can't say outside of him uh, trying to murder Apocalypse with the with the X Force members. I can't remember anything else about him. He didn't really do an awful lot to detective work in that. No. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think that's everything. Unless anyone can think of anything else to mention. Um, not a huge amount. There's been a couple of other things about like different. Um, Tournaments like the pre release have given the dates out for the Deadpool and X Force pre releases because that set got like knocked back a little bit, didn't it? The, the, the US yeah. release yeah, date is the yeah, 1st of March. But they've got the dates, obviously, this is like the United States were going off, so the dates for the UK are slightly different. Um, but they're up on the on the heroclicks.com. Yeah. Um, I think what we're still looking at blah, 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 towards the end of February. <laughs> Um, for pre-releases, but it'll be the UK ones. Yeah, the UK ones are very different. Yeah, but again, I don't think there's any price support for the pre-releases. This, so. yeah, but you get your get your hands yeah. on the figures for a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's the fun. That's it. You know, for me. Yeah. If I, can, if I can make it an event, I will certainly be doing it just any time I can. And um, when um, you get hold of a new uh, Phantom X. <laughs> There, there is a new Phantom X. I think yeah. he's been spoiled as an image of his sculpt, at least. Yeah. Um, let's hope he has another Eva. Well, he does. Well, I'm hoping he does because one of the um, prizes in the Wizards Opens for the uh, top eight, instead of ID cards, they're based in the pogs, and one of them is Eva. So I can't see them giving you an Eva for the Wizard <laughs> and the X-Men one. But, uh, he's hoping not. Um, so I think that's everything for the news so I think we'll talk to ourselves some more if I remember right yeah. with some more pizza face yeah I mean you said you were, <laughs> you'd had a, had your fill of pizza but um, he's the topic of this episode's team challenge so um, I think we mentioned earlier that the idea behind the team challenge is that every episode one of us will pick a figure uh, that we all need to build a team around um, so this time we picked pizza face for some no reason. Um, so, I picked him. Yes, you did. It was, it was, <laughs> because he hates us. It was your pick. So, um, as it was your pick, Chris, would you yep. like to go first and tell us what you came up with? Certainly. Um, well, I've got uh, basically a pizza delivery team. Um, it consists of Pizza Face at 60 points, uh, Overdrive from the um, Superior Force of Spider Man, 35, Nick Fury, we all know him, 120. Um, playing Goliath, the ant super rare Ant Man, just because I like Ant Man. Um, the full round table with six ID cards. Um, so it's basically looking at um, putting those pizzas in your face with overdrive the vehicle. Um, you're gonna be, let's say, it's a bit random when we looked at them about how many you're getting. Um, but they do have plasticity, poison which are things you're looking at. So although they're tiny, um, plasticity, although not many people realize this, the penalty stack. So unless you're a giant and you can ignore them completely, um, if you slap like three or four pizzas stand next to somebody, you'll be adding, you'll be getting like minus eight um, to try and break away. So you will not be breaking away generally. So overdrive is there just to call everybody about, um, maybe drop Nick Fury in a position while he ties everybody up with the pizza um, pizza face, you probably want to push him on on a second click, to get his mastermind, um, and he can either sit there, maybe bring out ID cards. Um, Goliath is there to produce more ants. If you're really feeling funky, the ants can actually carry the pizzas as well, because um, ants are uh, standardized, and then the pizzas are tiny. Yeah. So there's a lot of nice little pogs to help turn you around the table as well. Oh, very good. Yeah. Me. So that's great. Um, Dale, yeah, you want to tell us what you came yeah. up with? So I just came up with a similar idea. I, I like the pizzas, I like the poison, and I thought, how was the best way to get people across from this one? I thought about trying to make something semi competitive and went, just there is no chance. So I threw it all out the window and went for a themed uh, 
Tears with the Turtle Enemies team. I went with the 60 point Baxter Stockman, the Flea one, big Flea one, Fly one, because he can carry uh, multiple teeny tiny people. Stuck in a couple of mouses with him because I can carry them as well as some pizzas if I don't make enough of them. And the mouses can get carried by the pizzas. I don't know why that's interesting, but there you go. Uh, on top of that, I thought I forgot to got Pizza Face. Put in Shredder, the 80.1, who is just really good. I mean, perfectly solid. And then two, uh, Chain Kami Kama. I definitely said that wrong. Um, foot Soldiers, the 30.1s, just decide to, to, to bring in some more pizzas and they can hook and pull people in and lock them in place so I can just surround them with more pizzas and hopefully get some poisons on them. Cool. That's 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 it. Really, Shred is there to make it outwit, and I think that's probably the only other thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I looked at doing a a, a theme team um, using the TMNT villain keyword, and then when I built the team, I looked at it and thought, no, that's just a crown team. <laughs> <laughs> so I scrapped that idea, um, and I went for a uh, much the same as what Chris did. Really, just. Um, but, I uh, used a pog generating team um, with Pizza Face, uh, Devil Dino, um, Ant Man, Penguin, uh, with a full round table, and then rounded it off with the 15 point atom for cross retaliation. Um, the ID cards, I wanted ID cards that basically um, were under 100 points, so Devil Dino could call them in. Uh, so I opted for Triathlon. Um, Shang Chi using the uh, monthly OP Shang Chi, uh, She Hulk Wonder Man at T65 point line, uh, the 100 point Superior for the Spider Man Super Rare, the Hans one, and Constantine for Mystics on all of the Pogs. Um, yeah, that was about it, really. I mean, I, I just I just like the figure, so. Uh, you just want something done. Yeah, I just wanted yeah, just yeah, leave him at the back and just have <laughs> like the pox just swarming the board. Yeah. So that was me. Um so I think do you do you want me to pick a figure for next? Yeah, episode? I think it would be your turn, yeah. Um well one of my favourite figures to come out of Joker's Wild has been the Prime Anarchy. So I think we should aim to build a team around that. So that would be Prime the Anarchy. Episode. I'll yeah. have some fun with that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All about board control. Um, so, okay, so that's out of the way. So we'll now move on to rules. Um, so I'm going to pass you over to Chris now so he can talk about any updated, obscure, or abusable rules that have arisen from uh, WizKids or are being talked about in H2 Realms because I know you like your shenanigans, Chris. So, uh, well, I like my rules. I like people to know the rules and to play the rules correctly. Um, so the Prime Anarchy actually leads us on very nicely to that because I'm going to be looking at beginning of the turn trigger effects um, and Anarchy's bomb mark as a wording of that uh, falls under that recent change. Um, so this was a change... Um, it was, I think it was just over the holidays, really. There's a couple of rulings on Radioactive Man and Proteus. Um, it all relates to the beginning of the turn. So um, just to, if you're not familiar with the their traits, um, I'll just give people some. It's a Radioactive Man with a nuclear level radiation trait. Uh, it's basically, at the beginning of your turn, if Radioactive Man is adjacent to an opposing character, you get the choice of things to do. Um, without going into what, what the thing you can do is. It doesn't matter for the sake of this rule. Um, and there's also one on Proteus, which is basically his burning out host's body's effect um, when he's modifying his combo values, but at the beginning of the turn, he rolls his dice to see if the equipped character takes uh, damage. So what the, um, they're looking at is things like that are triggered at the beginning of the turn. Um, so with uh, normally... Um, what I have ruled with is beginning of the turn effects, you can just choose when they occur um, any time during the beginning of the turn. Any time before you've, um, you're given a non-free action, it doesn't end and the beginning of the turn phase. And um, so previously, the radioactive man could have sidestepped next to somebody and then said, ooh, I'm adjacent to you now. Um, what they've said is because of the wording of the uh, trade. So at the beginning of the turn, if he is adjacent, 
what it said, so the check for that trigger happens before you can activate or resolve any other effect. Um, yeah. So it's basically he has to be adjacent. There's no sidestepping, there's no free TK, none of that malarkey. Um, but once it's been triggered, you can then, you don't have to resolve the effect straight away. You can then do other uh, free actions and things that are any other beginning of the turn effects, but the check for the trigger. So he doesn't get that choice unless he's adjacent. So you can still go, oh, well, I've, I've got the trigger, I'll outwit something, and then I'll choose my damage that I'm going to deal, things like that. Okay. Um, it's the same with Proteus, where the check is at the beginning of the turn phase, and it's going to, slightly different, but it's going to resolve regardless of what other things you do in the beginning of the turn. Because I think one of the um, questions was about, oh, if I make Proteus as a free action, um, I'll make him, not Proteus, but the person he's possessing, if I make him a giant or turn him into a non-standard character um, because it's equipment, normally that doesn't work as equipment if it's a non-standard character. So people are trying to get around it by just saying, only oh, non-standard, so I don't take the damage. But the actual, as soon as the beginning of the turn occurs, um, that trigger is going to resolve. It's basically, if you've ever played Magic, it's like talking about a stack it's saying yes it is triggered you do not have to resolve it straight away but you have to resolve it sometime during the end the beginning of the turn you can't get around it um mm -hmm. you know, i think they used to rule it uh so that was all very well um for those two figures so it's looking at what else this applies to really because you know there's other there's other figures there's other resources that may have a similar wording um, and it's a little bit confusing because um, you've got to watch for just how it's worded. There's lots of things that say at the beginning of the turn, something happens. Um, so it's basically looking at the word and the word says at the beginning of the turn, if with so triggered effect, looking at if um, its conditions are fulfilled. So just mentioning anarchy as we did previously. Um, he, he's got a bomb marker um, as a trait, I do believe. Mm -hmm. I think it's his trait. Um, so at the beginning of the turn, if an opposing character is within three squares, you roll your dice to see if your bomb blows up. So again, this is the same aspect as radioactive, not the same wording, should I say? So it's looking at, you check to see if somebody's within three squares or anything, any other effects kick in. So, I think so you can't did, sneaky Mephisto him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do that. If you check the trigger, and then if the trigger occurs, you can do other things because you might want to go all out with your defense, and then I'll roll to see if my bomb blows up. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but the your check, check is done before that. The check is done, and then it's up to you as the active player to see when in the beginning of the turn that is going to kick in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're looking um, for words if. I, I, if generally, it's the trigger that, word really, or when, or something like that. So it's generally looking at yeah. it because with triggered effects, some of them just trigger at the beginning of the turn, or some of them looking for two things. Some of them looking for something else during the beginning of the turn. Um, yeah, yeah. Because there's an example. I'll just put one example up where it doesn't trigger when it is different. Where it's like the toy soldier with the new um, uh, winter OP kit where it's got a, a beginning of the turn, you choose a diagonal and you see it's all the bystanders and everybody on that same diagonal, you can place another bystander. Um, now that's, that's not the same because it's only looking for the beginning of the turn effect. It's not looking at if something else is occurring during the beginning of the turn. So you can then sidestep everybody so they're all in the line and then you trigger the effect. Um, because it's not seeing if, it's not looking for a second uh, yeah. trigger um, and there's one more that I've picked out because this um, I know I've done this myself with the round table, table. yeah, yeah, so yeah it, the column it, reserves yeah where it's column reserves where you've got the parachute symbol because it says at the beginning of the turn if that number is revealed so previously what I've done is let's say you're on click one and you call somebody in it lands on click three you take the um, and it's a slot Say number one, I think on click three. So you've used up number one. Oh, that's not empty. I'll slap it straight back on in the, in the same turn. 
but this is basically saying it's this is before any other effects kick off. It's checking to see is that um, is that ID slot empty um, and active. So you you would um, you wouldn't be able to do that in the same turn as you called somebody in, turn the dial, and then reveal that because other effects have occurred. Um, so so you can call yeah. in an ID and then replace that ID you've just called in back in the same slot. You have to, you'd have have to to yeah, you'd have to wait the next turn, and yeah. if it's still on the same slot before any other effects, then you go, ooh, now I can put my card back on. Yeah. But I've done it before when I've done it in, in just the same turn. It revealed it, and that slot's empty. I slapped it back on, turned it another click. Um, so you'll probably, not many people will realize this. Um, there might be other effects that I haven't noticed, but it's just looking at if there's another trigger that's occurring during the beginning of the turn. And it's the same as like the end of the turn as well. There might be other things that occur. Not so many things do, but at the end of the turn, things might be checked for. Um, I don't think of anything off the top of my head, but you know, keep, an keep an eye out for them. Let yeah, us know. Keep an eye out for that. If you, if you guys, if anyone, if anyone listening spots that, and not, and we, uh, this one, just send us a message and we'll keep a track of them all so we know exactly if there's anything that, that people have forgotten about. And then play the game by, like, by the rules. <laughs> okay, well, um, finally, uh, this is the part of the show where I would usually discuss a team that's maybe caught my eye from a, any recent tournament reports, uh, WKOs or OCs. Um, unfortunately, with the holidays, there hasn't been very many tournaments, so um, what I do want to talk about is a recent article that has been published uh, on the Apex Insider site. Uh, written by Paris Gordon and Ethan Brock about a team they're planning on playing uh, in an upcoming super qualifier. Um, the team's just for people who haven't, sorry, interrupted Sean, um, just sorry. people who don't know about Majestic, do you just want to see what is Apex Insider? Yeah, it's um, it's on the Majestic CCG site. Uh, it's a, a subscription site where, um, although they also do po- uh, post free articles as well, um, uh, with articles written by some of the top players in Hero Picks, um, uh, tournament reports, team ideas, team builds, um, and Chris, you've got well, we've got an article up there. It was one of the three articles Ooh, currently. Haven't yes, we? we've got we. That was our write up of the um, with Kids Open. Yeah, um, so, no, yeah, so me and you did. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's. Uh, it's a, a wealth of knowledge um, um, whether reading articles on there and trying to get ideas for different teams and I see get ideas many times out of ten it's myth decking ideas but <laughs> they did yeah, some so, good um, YouTube videos but they seem to have stopped doing that now they haven't done yeah, it they have. of, like testing like teams out uh, with each other and I quite enjoyed them so mm-hmm. they come back mm-hmm. yeah um, so anyway, so the team that they wrote about was fundamentally a pog generating team. Uh, I don't know if any of you have read the article, uh, but it consisted of it now. Um, it consisted of uh, Age of Ultron Goliath with fifty points, obviously generating ants. Uh, the uh, Joker's Wild Penguin, more pog generating. Uh, the Ha 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 Joker from uh, Joker's World, the one that's really difficult to kill. Um, 25 point Atomica, 15 point Henry. Uh, now, bear in mind this team is a is for a limited format. Um, the uh, special object weapon drop, thin particles, um, green light from Superman Wonder Woman set, and they've got the uh, Isaac Pog, the Scully's Warbot, the one that he was allowed to bring back from winning a whatever tournament he won that allowed him to bring that back. <laughs> um, so I guess the the idea is that Greenlight has a trait that brings toughness and flight to all friendly characters at 40 points or less. Um, so that would basically be all of the Pogs and the Joker and the Penguin. Um, the idea being that the uh, Joker is the one who picks up the weapon drop to give him even more uh, powers. And um, I think they talked about putting Pim's particles on green light to make him uh, giant or colossal or whatever it was uh, for, you know, uh, easy targeting because he's got that ridiculous barrier, hasn't he, halfway through his tail. Um, yeah, it's it. towards the end. Yeah, it's, I mean, I don't actually own a, a green light, but um, 
yeah, he's he's. I think he's he'd be fun to play. Um, I do you own one? I've never thought of any. I've never really thought of any use for a box within a box within a box within a box. I think yeah. is the or within an infinite number of boxes. I think is the yeah. name of the power. Yeah, uh, I think it'd be fun to play. Um, you surrounded somebody with barrier, aren't you? Is that what it does? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. So you just put yeah, one. No, I think barrier, anyway, but yeah. Yeah, you basically fully block them in, give them earthbound. And yeah, give them earthbound. They earthbound. get an action token yeah, yeah. if they if they haven't managed to get away from more than at least if there's three left, they get they get an action token as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I suppose if you do that, they're going to be fly over it. They? They're going to be able to fly over that barrier. Uh, you can leap and climb over it though. Yeah. <laughs> the body has a leap and climb. Yeah. 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 It's 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 fun. I imagine they must have chested it, so it must have some use. Well, both imagine. of them are playing it, so. I, I think imagine. it's obviously given. It, it's given because one thing playing my ant swarms. One thing you really hate is, is people poisoning you because it's just getting rid of them for nothing. So yeah. given full toughness and making them actually, especially if you've got to see a multi-target or get energy explosion, being able to kill a lot of them in one go really sets you back. So just toughness doesn't seem like much, um, but it is. It will, it will mount up and it will mean that you cannot kill them very easily. You have to put more damage into them. You can't poison them. Um, you need like a double target energy explosion for them to kill. Uh yeah, yeah, it's green light. If anyone's, if, if anyone can answer this question, uh, I'll read it word for word, and we'll, we'll and I'll, I'll mention why I'm talking about it. So, it can use barrier. What it does, instead of placing the markers normally, you can choose a single base opponent character within range and line of fire, and place blocking terrain in each unoccupied square adjacent to that character. Now, can you? Could you do that to, for example, select something that you can't see or target because you're not targeting. Just choosing yeah, him. You can and, that, yeah, he, he, he just obviously been targeted, but you're not targeting him. He just, oh no! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Because um, making a choice of a character is actually targeting. targeting. They have that is ruled. So I think when you choose a opposing character, I do believe that is classed as targeting. I'm ninety ninety well eighty percent. Because I'm sure I was reading some ruling on that before. When a, when you're making a choice of a character, I think it goes back to targeting. you're targeting a character. Yeah, so he will not be he will not allow you to be targeted. I, that's sad. It was just one thing I was thinking because I, I think, tried I just think to test that Lex Luthor. Yeah, and, uh, that would be a one nice way of just you surround him, earthbound him. He can't break out the box. You incapacitate him, and all of a sudden you can just rinse, repeat forever and ever. And he has got that stop click as well, hasn't he? He does. I think all of the Red Sun uh, like heroes had a stop click. I'm just looking at. I'm looking at no. Uh, oh, Batman doesn't, but I suppose Batman blows himself up in this comic. So yeah. when the click is used, you're taking damage from an opponent's attack. Stop turning the dial. Green light can use super senses. When he does and succeeds, you may heal him with one damage. Yeah, so so it's him and him and Br- Batman and Brainiac are the only two that don't have stop clicks. Yeah, um, but yeah, I I, I I could be honest. I like the Brits and Superman chases. I think they're wildly underrated, but only because you know Kingdom Come you can just that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that that yeah. that was what I, I saw. I, I, the that Joker as well is is really difficult to kill as well, isn't he? He's, he's the, the you are playing him at 40 points, so uh, he's the one who's going to be played at 30, 40, or 50 points, isn't he? I can't can you, say can I've can fully wrapped my head around him. Yeah. You're giving him flight as well and toughness because he's 40 points as well. The same yeah. You're just making them more manoeuvrable as well. Yeah. The only one who isn't getting it is Green Light and Goliath. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, just caught my eye there as I was reading the article. I thought, oh, that that looks fun and it looks interesting. The fact that uh, you're giving all these pogs toughness and uh, flight. So and the fact that the ants are standard size, then they actually you know you know you only give them the flight ability, so they won't get the carry ability, will they? Well, if the other if the other pogs are tiny, then they won't be able to carry them. Yeah. So are the penguin pop? Uh, the penguins are tiny, I believe. Yeah. I think carry them. What's the other pugs he's using? Uh, yeah. Penguins are tiny. 
he's using the Scaddy's Warbot Pog, which right, has played itself. So, um, Atomica, so yeah, you could carry Atomica. Henry, yeah, it could carry Henry. Yeah, so using the ants to carry around your little tiny guys as well. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So that's that's it, I think, guys, unless you've got anything else you just want to, you just want to talk about. Or... Um, we might want to just mention our... We've got a website. It hasn't got much on it. But hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, we will... Um, have started. We've up, we put up um, articles and links and things like that. Um, and if you can, ever, can anybody remember the URL of the website? Probably not. Oh. Yeah, it was as well simple done. as that. Yeah. Okay, so we should have a Facebook. We've got a Facebook page. Um, we'll be starting to advertise it. Um, so hopefully we'll have some you know, interesting stuff up there. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think that's all for this episode, then. So I'd just like to say thanks for listening. Um, no. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.